Okay, welcome back to Comic Book History, Episode 50. Yeah, you might be thinking, you're doing a Comic Book History episode today? Okay. Yeah, this one I did mention exactly who I was going to do for this one. Yeah, I decided I was going to do Steve Ditko. Yep, Steve Ditko. Yeah. Probably by far one of the best comic artists of the last century. And despite that, the guy himself is a bit controversial. Why? Well, for one thing, the guy himself basically... Here's the thing. Apparently by 1962, the guy never made public appearances. Nope, never did. That was something quite strange for him. He had been basically been drawing comics in the 50s. If you want to know what his first comic cover was, it's this thing. Yeah, this horror cover. Yeah, this cover right here. This was the first cover he did for The Thing number 12 from 1954, which featured a woman, looks like a vampire woman, biting another woman. Yeah, very weird as Poto. Yep. Yeah, this is back, back in the 50s. He basically was working for Charlton at the time. Yes, Charlton Comics. Yes, the same company he would create a boatload of characters. Yes, a lot of characters. Well, basically a small number of them per se. Yeah, but in the case of basically where he worked out for Charlton, like, like his first work aside from the the thing, which was actually considered his first published work, he also worked at Fair Publications, Harvey Comics, Key Publication Prize. When he worked at well, Charlton, he did create one character before he actually left the company to work at Marvel, and that was Captain Adam. You were thinking, Captain Adam, you mean the, the guy who's basically silver color, like this. Yeah, no, that's, that version himself, basically, that was done by Carrie Bates and Pat Broderick. The original version of the character looked a lot different. Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah. This right here, this was Captain Adam's original costume. That's what Steve Dickel gave him back in the, in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Yes, when, when he joined Marvel Comics in, by the time the 60s roll around, he pretty much was given like a few comics basically to work on, but there were two very important comics he worked on during this period of time. He worked on Amazing Spider-Man and Strange Tales. Who, what, what character, what, well, he created Spider-Man, obviously, and people know that he's created Spider-Man, Die Doctor Strange. He also created, get this, for Spider-Man, he created Flash Thompson, May, and Ben Parker. He also created Liz Allen, Norman Osborn, the green, like, pretty much, like, a lot of, like, when you think of, like, classic 60s Spider-Man villains, a lot of them were basically created by Steve Ditko. Some of the big ones like the Rhino and the Kingpin, nope, he had nothing to do with them at all because he left by issue 38. The reason why he left, uh, there's a bit conflicting stories exactly of why he left, but he did. He was only at Marvel for just for a few years at in his original tenure. Yeah, he worked there from 1956 to, and this was his original tenure, to about 1965. Yeah, that's pretty much how far he worked at Marvel. When he worked at Amazing Spider-Man, he did the first 38 issues and the first two annuals. He was in the book for three years. He did a couple issues of Incredible Hulk. He did the issue debut Spider-Man. He also worked on some Hulk and Giant Man stories from Tales of Sonic. Tales of Spence worked mainly Iron Man stories. And for Strange Tales, yes, for Strange Tales, he created Doctor Strange. Yep. I'll talk more about him later in the video. He's also for creating Speedball. Yep, he created this character. Yeah, he may return to me as an experiment for the annuals. He did like three annuals, 22, 24, and 25. His last comic he did for the company, officially of course, was Shadow Li Shadows of Light number one. Iron Man still released in 1998. And this was 20 years before he passed away. Yep. And then by the late 60s, he jumped over to DC. But before I get to his DC tenure, his, his, his 
Charlton Comics Tensure, which I think he was working at the same time as his Tensure at Marvel. He created characters, not only like Captain Adam, but he also created the Take Core Blue Beetle, The Question, Nightshade. Yeah, he created all these characters. Characters people are familiar with. A lot of these characters, thanks to stuff like for the question of Cap Vem, thanks Just League Limited, that's what people know about him. And in the case of Ted Cord, mostly because of the comic books and outside of comics, mainly because this guy did show up on Batman the Animated Series. Well, he did he showed up like one episode. And he was mentioned in Young Justice. When he worked for DC, he created these characters. He created the Creeper, Hawk and Dove, the Shay the Changing Man. Let's see. The question he created for Charlton. But yeah, his his lineup of characters he did for DC is quite interesting. Yeah, for his DC characters, well, there's actually a picture of basically who he created for DC. Yeah, these are all of his characters. We have Shay the Changing Man. We also have Hawk and Dove, the Creeper. Yeah, he also created one, one of the Starmen. He created the Prince Gavin version of the character. Yeah, who who showed up in Page of Adventure Comics. He worked on that too. Not much. What, what else can I say about the guy? Well, I know I could talk a lot more about the guy. I mean, what did he create for Doctor Strange like Doctor Strange himself? He also created Dormammu. He created uh, the the creature Eternity. Yeah, he created this character. Yeah, there he is. Eternity. Yep. Like, some of the early stuff for Doctor Strange he did create. And for Spider-Man. I mean, when you think of Spider-Man villains... Let me look at the characters, the ones that he created, and people ever has been with him. The Green Goblin, the Enforcers, Doctor Octopus, the Sandman, Craven the Hunter, Electro, the Scorpion. A lot of these characters, people are familiar with him. Venom, no, he didn't have anything to do with him at all. You are thinking, wait, how about Shocker? No, that was Darmia Senior who did him. Prowler, Darmia Senior. Kingpin, same person. Rhino, same person. He left issue 38, though I've heard a couple conflicting stories, basically, the reason why he left. One, because he couldn't get along with Stan Lee. The other is because he disagreed of who the, the Green Goblin was. He wanted some random person with the Green Goblin. Stan Lee wanted Norman Osborn the Green Goblin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he technically is the person who created Mary Jane Watts, even though that... Jarmia Sr. gave her, her basically her face that she's basically known for having. As a matter of fact, Jarmia Sr. actually drew the iconic scene that's been parodied like a couple times over the years of basically of the line of, Face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot because you basically are staring at a smoking hot woman. Though he did create Gwen Stacy. Yeah, he created her. Yeah, he she was she also created Betty. He also created Betty Brand, J. Joe Jameson, Daily Bugle, no, Randy Robinson was not a crazy as the That was also Jeremy a senior as well, though Jerry Conway did a lot with him in the 80s. Though, when he, when he returned to the comp, he turned Marvel in the 80s, he didn't do a lot, from what I can tell, working on some what-if stories. He worked with Peter Giles on some stuff. Peter Giles mentioned he was a great guy to work with. But the guy didn't really make public... He didn't... As a matter of fact, he apparently, from what I read, he apparently didn't like doing interviews. Yeah, he's by far the only comic artist I have ever heard of who did this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when he created a character like Shay the Changing Man, I mean, his only appearances were his only brief ongoing series, an issue of a comic, Cancer Comic Clavicade, and he briefly appeared in the pages of Suicide Squad, and that's it. He appeared for like a handful of issues. Yep, and then he was never seen again until they basically rebooted him in the 90s with the, with the Peter Mulligan character. Oh yeah, and if you're curious though, what was his last major creation he did for Marvel Comics? Or at least ever, what was his last character ever created? Squirrel Girl! Yep, he created Squirrel Girl. Yep. He drew, basically, he was this is technically the last character he did for Marvel. It's interesting though that this is the last one he created, even though that, I mean, this is a character, I would say, in the last 
five or six years to people will because of her string of popularity. But I think at the time, this was a character that not a lot of people were taking notice of at all. It's only in the last like fifteen years they've actually done something with the character. She's appeared sporadically since her first appearance. I mean, she's more popular because of her recent ongoing series. Speedball, I'm sure Dicko was not been very happy of how basically Mark Millar treated him. Yeah. Though at least Speedball had never died. Interesting though, Marvel has officially killed off two of, of Steve Dicko's characters. Actually three. Yeah, three have died in just, just a few short years. Yeah, first they killed off Electro by having him get kissed by his dead girlfriend. Which apparently this is how he killed her too, by accident. And that killed him. And he he's still dead. He's dead for four years. Marvel doesn't want to bring him back at all. It's implied the same man's dead. And also... Yeah, they also kill Craven the Hunter again. This was Nick Spencer did this. This was the second time officially he's died. Yeah, he got killed off first in the 80s in the awesome story the Craven's Last Hunt, which is done by Jay and the Mighty. It's a, it's a classic story. I do highly recommend it. Yeah, Jay and the Mighty has basically wrote it. Though he was brought back in the in twenty ten in the Grim Hunt storyline, which he was around for about se- about long time. He was right back for nine years before he died again. Yep. But in the case of Doctor Strange who did he create for Doctor Strange? Aside from Doctor Strange himself, well, he created this mansion. He created the Ancient One. He created like a lot of stuff associated with Doctor Strange, mostly. Like what people think of Doctor Strange, like people like Dormammu, Clea. He created these characters. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. But Dicko himself basically, well, in the case of his DC stuff, his DC stuff is not exactly as well known as his Marvel stuff because when you think of let's say anything of his of from Mar from DC's been live action, the answer is none. None of his characters been live action. I mean Hawk and Duff featured in like an episode of Just Like Unlimited. The question was featured also as a recurring character in the series. But in live action? Tech or featured for like one episode. And Doctor Strange didn't make his live action debut until like a few years ago. Mm-hmm. But not a lot to say when it comes to when it comes to well the guy himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I could talk a little bit more about Steve Dicko's awesome work. But there's not a lot to say about the guy. Not really. I mean, if I get a chance, if I if I have a chance before he passed away two years ago. As a matter of fact, this I thought was quite strange, though, that the the, the year he passed away was also the same year Stan Lee passed away, which I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah, it's like the previous year, basically, like previously they had the cold creators of Stan of the Swamp Thing pass away, and now the cold creators of Spider Man Doctor Strange passed away. Yeah, but I know this one's quite short, especially like with Steve Ditko, but. Yeah, just check out the guy's work. The guy basically... I mean, if you're just curious, though, what you're working on from Spider-Man Doctor Strange. Like, in the case of Marvel, I mean, I can discuss basically what he worked on when it comes to, well, his Marvel work. I mean, he worked on Strange Tales. Let's see. Yeah, he worked on a Strange Tale during the mission. This, of course, before it became a, a Thor. I think, I think he left just after it became a Thor comic. Let's see. Worked a lot of Western, some horror books. He inked an issue of Star of Fury, the Howling Commandos. He worked on Machine Man for a brief period of time. He also worked on the second volume of Spotlight, Marvel Preview. He also was the last artist of Rom the Space... Rom... Rom Space Knight. Yeah, he drew issue 70, 59, 75. And he also drew on the annuals. Do a couple of annuals for Avengers. He did the entire Speedball series. All ten issues. And he also did some Mission Mortal Kombat Sense And a, a Web of Spider-Man annual. An annual for Iron Man. And 
a few books here and there. DC is mostly a Strange Tales, Showcase, the Beaver of the Creeper book, the first four. First cover is Hawk and Dove, Stalker, this is character created. Some issues of House Mystery, first issue special. Yeah, it's like a lot of like small stuff here and there. But it's almost like though that his tenure at DC wasn't as successful as let's say his tenure at Marvel. Because I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this trend though. It's like if you're successful in one company, you can't be successful at both Marvel and DC. There have been some creators who had success at both. And the only ones I can think of have been Jerry Conway, Denny O'Neill. I know George Perez has had success at both companies. So has Mark Wolfman. Let's see. Charles Scholl is a recent example of a comic creator who has success at DC and has success at Marvel. And of course, Colin Bunn. Steve Ditko didn't have a lot of success. It seems like a lot of the books he was on, it seems like he didn't want to stay in the book for too long, per se. And you look at his bibliography, it's like, man, the guy just didn't really like stick around very long on books. I mean, it wasn't Spider-Man or Doctor Strange. And I think he was one who started this trend where, like, where writers just have to have a story where Spider-Man and Doctor Strange have to team up. And I think Steve Ditko was the one who started this trend when he introduced Doctor Strange from uh, Xanadu in the second annual for Amazing Spider-Man. Which is actually printed for an issue of Doctor Strange book, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I could discuss more, but there's not a lot to talk about with him, per se. He is my favorite artist. The guy does very, very, very good work. Though, one thing I didn't like about his Amazing Spider-Man work... And even my friend Edgar probably knows this too. Apparently, he didn't know how to draw a guy who was black properly. At least they, when they inked them, it's like, oh, let's have a black character in a book as a background character. Instead of, you know, have him as an actual character. He did this a couple times and his wrong time was kind of weird. Which, as far as I can tell afterwards, he did draw black people properly in the books. And get and be basically have proper characters. It's almost like he just didn't care to. He wasn't a racist, for what I can tell. He was basically objectivist. And the best character to sanctify, basically, his objective attitude was the question. And, of course, the character Mr. A, which is a character he owns. Well, I think, as of right now, his family owns the character because he died. Yeah, I think he probably does. Also, I heard something that he does have a net. Apparently, this guy never married. And he also had no kids. He... Though there was a rumor he had a son, though he does have a nephew with the same name, Steve Ditko. And he's also an artist too, but I've never heard of anything at all. Nope. Oddly enough, in the case of Steve Ditko himself, he had not, like, prior to his death, he apparently had not received any royalty checks for a spiral Dr. Strange was out. That was kind of stupid. And the guy was a recluse. He basically hid in his apartment for years. I'm like, okay, then... How is he paying bills? Probably he was receiving retirement from Marvel. That's possible. That's probably the only way he's making a living was basically from retirement from Marvel. As far as I can tell, he had no problem with Marvel Comics. He just didn't like Stan Lee very much. Yeah. But if I get a chance to talk to more people about Steve Ditko, I probably would. But check out the guy's work. The guy is just really good. Just look at his bibliography and see what the guy did, and you'll see how good an artist he was. Yep, so starting with the very next episode, discussing various characters that he worked on. For the first one, 51, I'll be discussing Doctor Strange. Yep, I really want to talk about this character for some time, and I have used some trades for the character, but then we're specifically talking about the character himself, per se. I will discuss more about that in 51 for the series. Mm -hmm. But do you next video. Bye.